Hi everyone and welcome to week seven. Uh, as you heard me say last week, we are in the home stretch, but literally this this week and next week concludes our course. And this week we're going to be finishing up usability, jumping into dabbling, talking about some responsive lay layouts, and then of course um, the looming Google Maps API. Uh, not going to be a problem. So I'm excited to uh, finish some things up with you guys this week in preparation for the client pitch next week. Speaking of the client pitch, you know, think about this course and where it is fit within the web development lifecycle. As you know, the majority of what this course in web in design principles two has been is truly been the designing and the developing of this prototype site that could be used to then pitch to the client in hopes that they will accept your design and give you and give you their business. Um, the planning analysis portion of the web development life cycle would have been what you guys done in 2150. And again, I know that lots of students come to this course with different backgrounds of 2150, but I think we've all made it work. And this term, these last eight weeks, we've been designing and developing some some fun, engaging websites. We have been dabbling into usability during week six and concluding that here in week seven. So that kind of is the aspect of the reviewing and uh, testing phase. But you know, it's always important to remember that um, while each of these phases do build on each other, they don't necessarily have to occur in sequence. Don't forget about that feedback loop. Which reminds me, this week, one of the videos that I'm having you guys watch, well, it's the extra credit. For those of you who would like to leave that extra credit, please let me know. But this video, which is, this video also derives our title for the week. Um, let's look at what this is talking about, because it has to do with usability. I'm going to go ahead and read this first paragraph. Have you ever said to yourself, that was a waste of time after sitting through usability testing to just discover significant changes are needed um, on your brand new design? You know, I mean, because that could be what happened if potentially think about it. If you have gone through planning and analysis, designing and developing, you've been doing all of these in sequence, and then you get to reviewing and testing, there could be an instance where you may have to go backwards. You know, sure, we know that usability testing is important, but does it need to wait until the end is of the design is complete? Why not combine these two when possible? Um, so I'm excited about what you guys are going to get from watching this video from Dan Rubin. Um, it's going to hit home the fact of that feedback loop that we talked about last week. Very important that these things can occur. All of these phases can occur in tandem. And don't forget about that feedback loop and how each phase can essentially affect another phase. So I'm hoping that if anything, um, go to the extra credit video, give it a good five minutes of your time just to know kind of what Dan is talking about. And then if you need to, bookmark it and watch it for later. I'm hoping that some of you uh, may decide that you'd like to lead us the class and discussion about that video resource as well. Because um, I think all those resources that I've gathered for you in the course, I believe, are very important to help shape you as becoming the future web designer that you guys are going to be. This week we're also going to be talking about some things that could be distracting. Back in week four, we talked about how graphics can be distracting, but this week we're going to be hitting home the fact that there's a good chance that perhaps dynamic content, <coughs> excuse me, dynamic content can be distracting as well. Um, dynamic content, when you think of it, could be, if I excuse the, the food analogy, I'm a big guy and I like food, but I mean, dynamic content really could be that secret sauce, right? The secret sauce is that burger that really separates the Big Mac from other fast food burgers or separates the Big Mac from uh, a regular burger. Um, so it's not often what the necessarily the it's not often what the user is necessarily looking for specifically on your site because they're looking for specific content but adding that dynamic aspect could be what draws that user back I mean that's a very important thing to think about um, but then again dynamic content can also be distracting so when we're talking about dynamic content it's important to know that we're talking about things like interactive images uh, multimedia, which when I say multimedia, I'm talking about text combined with audio or text and video, or even just dynamic content could just be video and audio itself. And then, of course, the most popular of these four would obviously be social media. And I am going to devote some time talking to you about social media and uses of it here in this video today. But then also, as a required aspect of your term project, having some sort of interactive map. That would be a map that the user can actually interact with. Uh, through the use, ideally through the use of Google API. And then you, so you need to think about this dynamic content and fit within your particular layout that you guys have set up. Do you put it in the body? Do you put it in the sidebar? Because we definitely, and then once you figure out where it's going to go, you need to think about, is it just going to end up being distracting, right? And you're probably thinking, well, how do I know if it's going to be distracting or not? 
well, think about some of the things that we've talked about in this course. You know, how does that dynamic content add value to the user's experience? To answer this question, you have to know one thing. Remember, what is the heart of the website? The heart of the website is the overall purpose of the website. Why is that website there? Okay, why is that website there? What's it supposed to be doing? That is the heart of the, should be the heart of everything, the heart of the design of the website, the heart of the functionality is the per, truly the purpose of that website. Because remember, the content is what the user wants and needs, right? That's what's drawing them to your website in the first place. And depending on how the site is designed, depending on how the functionality of the site, that could distract them, that could not allow them to get the content. So all of this essentially can be combined and hopefully it should be obviously aligned with the purpose of the site. So when we're talking about uh, does how's the dynamic, dynamic content out of value, well think about it in terms of the overall purpose of the site. How, how does it, how, what does it add to the user's experience? Does it take away from it? Does it distract them from it? Because if it does, and well, like I said, it's distracting. So when you think of dynamic content, of course you're probably thinking of some sort of social media and that's fine because um, often the social media can be wrapped up and considered what the user wants in, in terms of content. Um, so how can we utilize social media in our sites? Well, um, if you've taken classes with me before, I generally spend a lot of time at length talking about this, but I'm just going to kind of breeze through uh, talking about social media with you guys because that's not really the, the purpose of this class is, you know, obviously creating some dynamic content. Uh, perhaps interactive images, using a Google API or something like that, uh, or even embedding some social media. Um, but if you've taken other classes with me in the past, this might be a little bit rude, so feel free to jump ahead five minutes or something in this video. But when I talk about social media, I like to talk about it in you know, three different ways of sharing uh, the content. And it all has to do with these four different aspects. You know, We have who the client is, we have the content itself, of course the user, and of course the social media itself. So when we talk about social media, there's three different ways of sharing the content. These are some, maybe think of this as like four different factors. And of course we have these considerations, you know, how does that content add value, which we've already kind of touched on. You know, it's important to know who owns the content, who is sharing the content, and where is the content being stored. Okay, so that's what we're gonna cover in these next slides is these last three bullet points. Who owns the content, who's sharing the content, and where is the content being stored and it's very important for us as web designers to talk with our clients to make sure that they understand these different considerations so who owns the content using these four different factors you know there could be a situation where the ownership is directly between the client and the content or there could be a situation when the content is owned by the social media webster students i know have heard i've heard examples of situations where where users have posted content on different social media, and guess who owns that content then? Social media, not the, the Webster students. Think about the legalities of that. If you encourage the client to post some content on some social media, and then essentially the social media owns the content. So very important to think about. There could be situations where the user posts content on social media, right? I mean, that could be a good or a bad thing. You know, something to think about. What about in terms of who is sharing the content? Is the client sharing the content with the user? Is the user sharing the content? Um, think about that, right? Um, what could be the considerations that we need to consider with the user sharing the content or the client sharing content with the user? So think of it in this, also think of it in terms of where the content is being stored. <clears throat> in this example here, the client has the content and they're sharing it on the social media and then eventually it goes to the user. But there could be a situation, like I said earlier, where the user um, is sharing client's content on social media. So this, like, let me read the statement down here, allow the user to easily share the client's content on their own social media site. Now we're going to talk about these practically in just a second, but let me get through these three examples. And then the last example here would be the user taking content and they share it on social media and then essentially it goes out to the client. So the user shares content on social media which is then shared on the client's site. So like I said, how about we make this a little bit more realistic because while this course is a simulation, 
And I, I actually have had many students in the past that have actually been working on projects with real with real clients. But I think in this situation, this this term, most of you guys are working with uh, simulated clients. But let's say your client was our friends here. We all know who these people are. Uh, so these, let's say this was our, our client, and of course, who would our user be? This would be perhaps our user. She definitely is a Beatles fan, right? Now, what could the content be? Well, the content could be maybe some Beatles merchandise, or specifically, how about some Beatles bobbleheads, right? So let's make those things that we just chatted about realistic. So utilizing social media, let's say that the in this situation that we share the client's content on social media with the user. What would be an example of that? Can you think of one? Well, what if, let's say, okay, so how could the Beatles use Facebook to share their bobbleheads with the user? Think about that. I'm sure you're familiar with Facebook. You can kind of figure it out. But that's just an example of the client sharing content on social media, which eventually gets to the user. Now, remember, of course, think of the legalities of someone putting content on social media. Who then owns that content? Um, but what about this situation? This would be allow the user to easily share the client's content on their own social media site. That would be like if, uh, let's say, Beatles fan then easily share what they found on the bobbleheads. Let's say the bobbleheads website, uh, the, the the Beatles website. They she finds these bobbleheads on the Beatles website, and then we can then create ways to then have her easily share that on Facebook. Okay, maybe that would be more advantageous to use and recommend for your client to do. Um, speaking of, I mean, think about that. That's sometimes our role as a designer to recommend different uh, technologies that can help them do what they need to do or get the users to do what they need to do. And then lastly, uh, the user shares their content, social media, shares, I'm sorry, the user shares content on social media, which is then shared with the client site. So what would be an example of that, you say? Well, that'd be like if, how could the Beatles share what their users are saying on Facebook? So the Beatles fan is going on Facebook saying things and then how could that then be shared on the Beatles site okay I'm sure you can think of situated opportunities to be able to do that so as you're thinking of including social media on your sites these are just some different ways to, to do that and of course when you do that make sure that you think about obviously does the content add value because if it's not adding value what is it doing it's potentially it's distracting to the user and then obviously think about who owns the content who is sharing the content and where is the content being stored and all of that you know when you think of that especially in terms of adding value it always boils down to the heart of the design of the website the heart of the functionality uh, the heart of the design is truly the purpose of the website and if if your if your dynamic content that you're wanting to add is aligned with the purpose then I would say go for it if it's not aligned with the purpose I would say consider not including it or at least talk to your client about not including it then again, if your client comes to you and says, nope, this is what I want, and you tell them, well, did you think of this? And they said, yes, I still want it. Then guess what? They're the ones cutting your check. So this week, in terms of activities, as I finish up this short video, you know, we're reading about uh, in the geo zone of your painting the web book, and I provided you some Google API resources. Um, that's where you're going to be doing a lot of your learning about Google API because it's more updated than what you will find in your book. I do have some suggested Linda videos that I'm about to talk to you about. And then, of course, in our discussion area, I have a fun discussion this week where we're all going to be talking about some, some dynamic content. Uh, you could be using social media examples. You could be using uh, map examples, interactive images. But, of course, you're going to be talking about how does that content add value to the user's experience. So, And then, of course, we're going to be doing our final uh, pair discussion uh, this week, which is uh, we're going to be utilizing our usability um, tools that we I got some feedback on over the weekend and that we created last week. We're going to be using that feedback to then update our tools and then use them to review our partners' websites. So I hope you guys do that and of course remember how important that feedback is. I mean that feedback is worth its weight in gold. I've said that the last couple of weeks. Very important that you uh, get some actual students in the course reviewing your stuff, giving you some feedback. Because uh, you're not in this alone. We're all we're basically in this little nice little community building these sites, and I'm hoping that these sites will be a professional piece to your professional portfolio. So uh, the best way to do that is get some really good feedback. Um, and then finally, of course, we're taking our last quiz of the course, which is the week seven quiz. And then I'm hoping that some of you are at least going to check out that hands-on prototyping with HTML and CSS in terms of usability 
and uh, not waiting to do the reviewing and testing until the end. That's what's all going to be discussed in that great video for you. So I'm hoping someone will lead us in discussion of that video. And then in terms of our Linda videos, this is where we're going to be getting into having responsive designs. For those of you who have had the mobile class, uh, this is going to be kind of a, perhaps a little bit of a review for you, but this is where we can utilize CSS uh, to update our page layouts in terms of having a responsive design based on the different uh, devices that our users are using them in. And then it's also going to talk about how using CSS to enhancing our page design as, it, as basically that resource is being finished up. And then uh, another video from our friend Justin Seeley is enhancing web navigation with CSS. So in terms of having responsive design. And then as always, as I conclude all my videos, I'm hoping here in this week seven of the course that you're going to be an observant web user. Think about being observant also with the other student sites in the course. Um, I have, the, as so far, the, from the updates that I have, I have the updated ones published in the student sites area, so definitely be an observant user in there, giving each other feedback, learning from each other, thinking, wow, how did they do that? Well, of all the times in, in your life you actually have you know, maybe 16 other web designers in the course, you can ask them, how did you do that? Because um, you know, if you see something really cool on Amazon, it's probably a little difficult to be able to contact the web designer of Amazon and say, how did you do that? Um, but you have 16 other web designers in the course right now, so have fun learning from each other and definitely being an observant web user this week. And as always, let the class or I know if you have any discussions. Uh, so have fun with dynamic content this week. Talk to you later.